time to carry on with this project that I've been working on for my little voltage divider project. You see the playlist probably at the end or something. I this is revision two of the board. I haven't done revision three yet. I will get there though. Mounting positions will be exactly the same. So this is kind of sponsored by PCWay who provided the boards to me at no cost. And also Pomona who provided the binding post for me, banana jacks, I should say, at no cost as well. The parts have arrived, I've got the bits I need to do the job, so I can actually get on there and do it. So I've already drilled the holes out in this. Basically what you do is get some like tape, I use white tape because it's easier to see the pen marks, template it up, so I've just got the board laid over the, the panel, mart up the holes on the, on the tape, draw through them with a couple of drift and drills, so I started off with a 3mm uh, drill bit, and then I've gone to a 5mm, and then I've gone up to an 8mm which is what the final holes are for these particular posts, is 8mm. And these basically snap into the holes, they're actually just a nice beautiful fit. So you can see how we've got these ones positioned in. And I keep turning them over and dropping the bits off. So I've got to do the other ones. So I thought I'd better start recording this because I'm, I'm building this thing. I, I did intend to do this as a second part of the video. So let's do this final assembly part. Now this has got a few things I haven't resolved yet, which is that this needs a power supply. Now I've got this uh, op amp system on here. And I need to you know, have a power going to it somehow. I do want to put internal batteries in. I don't know if I'm going to squeeze them into this case or not. I'm going to build it into this case anyway. I may need to use a bigger case if I can't get the batteries in this one. Yeah, it's you know, one of these things. I'll give it a go anyway. You know, the, the case wasn't that expensive. So if it doesn't quite work out, oh well. So these are the binding posts I'm using, which is 73098. The hyphen 2 is red. Hyphen 6 is blue. And hyphen 0 is black. So... Like I say, these were given to me at no cost by Pomona, or I should say Fluke, who owned Pomona. So, we'll get these installed. Now, the interesting thing is that this one comes with two nuts, the red one, it's got two nuts in it. The blue one has one nut, and the black one has one nut. Um, I don't know why the red one comes with two, compared to the rest, I, I don't know what it is. It's just a bit weird. I guess I'll get a spare nut. I'll put that in there so it's a nice tight fit, just, just pops in. As it will be once I get the thing bedded down, maybe we've got a bit of a burr on that one. The other ones are beautiful. Now I'm going to show you on camera, of course, it's a little bit different. That'll probably do it. Try again. So you've got like a little nub on the shaft of these, which kind of locks them in. The other ones just popped in beautifully, so I guess I didn't quite run this one down nice enough with the drill bit. But anyway, that's down there now. So something I'm going to have to remember to do is to actually ground the guard pins. That one just popped in beautifully, exactly how the other ones were. Must have been that particular hole. Let's try this one. I want it to be tight so they don't move around. So that's all those in. Let's put the spaces on. So negatives that side, negatives that side. Now these should line up. I did do the whole tape thing, but those ones look good. There we go, beautiful. That's exactly how I wanted it. Stick washers on this side. But so I do need to put some grounding on here. So right now these binding posts are completely oh, banana. I keep calling binding posts, they're banana jacks. They're not actually binding posts because you don't have any bits which turn to lock down a wire. Yeah, so they're currently insulated. So I need to make sure the casing itself is bound to the guard terminal. So it is actually shielded case then, which is what the intention is there to keep the noise down. So as I've got some extra nuts, that works out beautifully because I can use those to like stick a strap on somewhere. I should rephrase that. I should use those to place a strap between the guard terminal and the casing somewhere. <laughs> Who knows what YouTube's going to make of that particular statement. Anyway, now can I get batteries in there? That's the question. Now I've got to tighten these nuts down. Got a driver for this. What size is that? 7mm. So it feels like it might be spinning. Anyway, I'll leave that line. Okay, that's built into the casing at least. Now I've got the battery holders here. They barely fit. So I put the casing on and I slide the battery holder down there. It just goes. Now if I get it past that other post, there we go. It's right on the end. Basically flush with the end on this one at least. Now these battery holders are very slightly different, interestingly. Um, they aren't exactly the same ones, they must have been different times or something. I think this one's a fraction shorter, not much in it. Yeah, it's it's really close, it's only just gonna fit. I wish I'd mounted it like a one millimeter further along that way or something. Especially as, well, when I did the board, I didn't quite mirror it right, so I've got the binding post slightly to one side of the board. The board is centered on the, on the housing, but you can see the gap this end's not quite the same as gap that end. 
So if I'd gone a little bit further that way, it would have been alright. Anyway, never mind. That's what he's saying. So this case is only barely big enough. And I'll just shove that one down this side. And it'll go right down. So I'll get the batteries in there. Now clearances from the terminals, mainly I'm not so worried about the negative side, but the positive side, also mind about those. That needs to go nicely. So, hmm, don't know. So another thing I need to consider is whether or not I'll put a BMS in here. It's not going to use much power. I mean, really, it doesn't need a lot of capacity. I mean, a shelf life means it'll be a, probably a couple of years between uses and still be fine, I imagine. If I was to put a BMS in here, then I could potentially put a charging port on it and actually have charging within the unit without having to worry about it, you know. I'll just chuck a BMS on and just plug in a 12 volts or whatever, it'll charge it up, you know, even once in a while when I need to use it. So I'm kind of thinking about whether or not I need one. Well, I could just chuck the batteries in series, wire them up, through a switch, you know, on off switch, and that'll be it. If I need to charge them, I'll take the cover off, put the batteries out, and you know, recharge them manually. Or I could put a BMS in. Yeah, I think I'll put a BMS in. That's kind of where I'm leaning towards. As I've hot glued the battery stuff in there, um, now I'm just doing the front panel, well, side panel, I suppose. I don't know, is it front panel? I've drilled these holes already, well, partly. That one's drilled to 6mm. So I've got the tape on there to get the, so it doesn't slip when you try and drill which will be 6mm for the toggle switch, so that will go in there, like that obviously facing the other way and I've also got an LED here which I'm going to put in a nice little holder now I've got to measure this and figure out what size that is, but I think it's about 8mm something like that anyway, I mean the LED will just clip into that so I've just got to make this hole here big enough for the LED to go in and then that will be that bit mounted up and I can wire those in and do the final connections and that should be basically ready, shouldn't be much more to do Alright, so holes are drilled. I've taken the tape off the front, I've deburred it. Let's put the LED piece in. Cool, that fits. Drop the LED in now. Don't forget positive lead is a longer one. I'll drop that in. I've got to do so what I'll probably do is put some hot glue behind it as well just to reinforce it. It doesn't pop around or move or anything. So it's that bit in place. Now you've got the obviously the LED wires I need to run one wire up to the switch, so when the switch is turned on it will light the LED up. And the other wire needs to go to the negative, or the other lead obviously through a resistor. So I'll put a series resistor on the negative side so that when it's turned on it will light the LED up so you don't forget and leave the thing turned on. So this is coming along, I've got a voltage regulator in here now which I almost forgot to do but uh, voltage regulator is in here off the switch so it goes to the voltage regulator, it's a 5 volt regulator. I've got a couple of tantalum caps on there and that's going to run the power to the board so I'll switch on, run to regulator with the tantalum smoothing caps which then powers 5 volts to the main board here. So I've only got to hook up the negative reference, like the zero volt rail to the regulator and the power output from the regulator to this board here and then we should be done. So I've got a ground on here, well the guard terminal. I don't know how good this is really going to be for that, I don't really like to run through a lead like that. But it needs to be a nice solid chassis connection. I'm going through this bolt which is scraped off on the other side on the bottom, where the, the bolt head is, or screw head. So it should be a good connection at least to the casing at least the bottom casing. We might have to do something about transferring between the top and bottom cases. I don't know yet. I probably want to put as few holes in it as possible. Something that did occur to me is I could actually put this voltage regulator with the post for the for the guard on the front panel, and then I could have actually had a post out the front as a like a secondary guarding or something. You know, you could clip onto that. I don't really know if I've got need for that. So maybe if I need to, I'll add it later on. But. Uh, yeah, it's coming along. So I haven't powered this up and tested it yet, but it should work. I've been cutting this post down as well to make this uh, not in the way. You'll probably see that. So I've still got this one quite long, so I just thought I'd leave it long because it's not hitting anything anyway. So uh, yeah, I may need to attach something else to that one. Maybe you know another attachment here and maybe to the top casing somehow or in panel. I don't know. But hopefully it will earth properly. When I've got all the panels screwed together, I'll be able to do testing on it anyway. But uh, yeah, finish wiring this up. Right, it is built. Uh, I haven't tested it yet. I haven't tested power, I haven't tested charging. I've got no idea if it works. We'll find out suitably, shortly. I've twisted these wires here together just to help reduce possible noise. It just seems like a sensible thing to do. So this should all just sort of lay down inside if it all goes well. Um, I haven't tried putting it together yet actually. Let's have a look. That should just go. Here we go. Fine. That's right. So it all just goes this. This bolt just misses that one. I could cut this one off, but I'm just going to leave it as it is. It's fine. It's not causing any harm. I can't turn the power on yet until it's had a voltage applied to the BMS. Once the BMS has had power going to it, 
then it'll turn the batteries on. So right now, even though if I turn it on, there's no power because BMS has disabled it. Obviously I put a charging port on the front here and um, I should explain other things I mentioned actually. I've got a switch mode little buck converter over here, a little small one. It does about 3 amps I think maximum. That's for the charging circuitry, the same setup as I used in my FarmTech interface stuff which I showed in, them, in that project. So exactly the same setup, so the charging power goes into the switch mode. That's got adjustable voltage on there so I can tune it. That goes through a shock key diode to the BMS power common which then goes back up to the switch to run through the switch to the regulator to the board and uh, it should work. First things first I need to leave it turned off, apply power, check the voltage setting on here, see what voltage you're getting down here on the BMS, test that part if that works okay then I can go to the next step which is to turn the switch on without the charging power plugs by then the BMS should have activated it should be on so I disconnect the charging power and just test the regulator and that side of it and make sure that's working. Yeah. Right, so I think I'm set up here. I've got power cable here, which I'll need to plug in. I'm hooked on to the BMS input for the power, so I'll be able to see what comes out of the switch mode regulator. So you should see it turn on, and then there should be power after that point, that which would be from the batteries itself. So power switch is turned off. Let's plug this in. 8.4, 9.5, there we go. BMS is now turned on. We've got 8 volts there. So that would now turn on if I turn the switch on. So let's check this charging voltage. 9.4 volts, but what happens with the um, the BMS module is that actually this particular one at least it floats up the negative rail So if the voltage coming into it is too high like it currently is for charging two lithium cells should only be no more than 8.4 volts max really so that's one volt extra What it does it be that would be floating up the negative rail by one volt if I were to measure across the, the Negative on there and the battery negative you'd see it'd be a one volt difference because it'd be floating it up Do you think I'll use my Pomona supplied trimming tools here and I'll adjust the voltage on that. So these are also from Fluke slash Pomona. So thanks to them for that as well. So not only did they give them the binding posts as well. The banana jacks as I keep messing up the name. Banana jacks also gave me these so for review items so thanks so much. Just give a plug since so that's going up. Let's turn it down. So I think if I set about nine volts that should be okay. And um, that would give it you know half a volt or so um, overshoot which means it's going to be putting decent charge in because obviously the closer the voltage is that it's currently going to be getting going into it 9 volts I think that's good enough that should be fine and you can see as I've unplugged it back to that again 8 volts as it should be so this should actually power up now so we we'll see if we get the lights come on we do get a light come on you can just about see it there I set the current quite low on that it's only about 12 milliamps or so it wasn't particularly high based on the resistor I used and also it's going to vary a little bit of the supply voltage across that battery as well so that's going to be a little bit variable but not too bad so that shouldn't really drop down much that's looking fine very slight drop so I need to check on the board and make sure that the supply going to the board is okay well out the upper of that regulator there to make sure I'm getting 5 volts on the board and until I am getting 5 volts on the board like I should be then we should all be good make sure we've got 5 volts here okay turn it on there you go, 4.97. Now a little trick you can do with regulators if you really need a, a little bit more voltage, so I did consider this, but I was thinking about the battery voltage dipping too low and causing issues with the dropout voltage of the regulator. Because this is standard 7.05, nothing particularly special about that one. You can put a diode in series with the negative, the zero volt pin of the regulator, and then that will shift that regulator up by that diode offset. So if you've got, say, a 0.6 volt diode, you can stick that in there, and it will shift the voltage up by 0.6 volts thereabouts. It's a nice little way of just getting a little bit extra of voltage if you need a little bit more. That kind of thing. Um, you know, or you can want to use a Zener, you could do that too. It works. Right, so I want to check now is the guarding and make sure the guarding is going to the case and okay. So let's stick that in there roughly onto that switch there. 8 ohms. Mm. And over to here is 0.5. It may be that. It's not particularly good to there. Let's go to the inside of the case there. It's going right down to 0.3 there. Yeah, it's in a buzzer off, eh? Change the resistance. So if I go terminal to terminal, I'm getting 0.1. Yeah, well, basically zero. There you can see it. 
we go to the inside of this case which is a screw hole here which is the top case which isn't attached to it's attached to the bottom case 0.3 so there's a slight resistance here if we go to the switch housing here which isn't earthed this isn't scraped off or anything to the switch so there's no residue removed 27 there go to the screw hole down the bottom here 28 there so let's try and see if I can get a better one over here 0.5 to there I've also got good connections to the casing at the bottom there at least because that's basically saying zero so that's on that screw hole there so probably what I'm going to need to do is maybe remove some of this anodizing inside these holes so these and maybe even do the same thing on the screws because it's all anodized and if I do that then it should improve the earthing between each section it's not too bad there and onto that screw there it's okay but if we go onto the case just here it's struggling a little bit it doesn't like the anodizing so the anodizing is causing problems so I think I'm going to have to remove the anodizing just to improve that earthing there but uh, anyway I'll get to that I need to test it see if it actually works well, so I've got it hooked up to my DC calibrator here, which is currently output in one volt. It's turned on, it's hooked up. I'm using the guard for the calibrator only. Um, going to the Datron now. All this has only been on for about, I don't know, three or four minutes. Hardly anything at all. So it's not up to temperature. The readings aren't going to be accurate. If it or not actually works, that's the thing. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Does it work? As a, it's being a 1000 to 1 ratio, one volt in should be one millivolt out. And sure enough, it is if I do 100 millivolt range. 1.1 millivolts so it's pretty much there and if I go to 10 volts output getting 10 millivolts 100 volts 100 millivolts all right so it's at least working in that regard and this isn't calibrated I need to calibrate this again because now I did the initial calibration but that was on a different voltage now I've got a voltage regulator in here I need to calibrate it for that 5 volt regulator so the output is inaccurate against that so I can't do that yet because obviously my gear's all cold and it's not warmed up yet so I need to wait a while before I do the calibration but at least I've got the means to do it so I currently at 100 volts and getting 100 millivolts so I go up to the 1 volt range next because I wasn't going to over range and I wind this up, you know, 500 volts get 500 millivolts 1000 volts and we're getting 1 volt it's going to get there I think, is it? maybe there we go, one volt. Oh, ish. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Barely. There might be a calibrator playing around, I'm sure. But um, it can be a bit funny sometimes. 1000 volts doesn't like that much. So, go down to 800. Alright, but obviously it is actually working. It's doing what it's supposed to do. I'll do a little jittering thing going on here, which is interesting. Is it a symptom of my setup? Is there something else going on? Hmm. Could be the calibrator. 900 volts. Back to 1000 again. And it is basically there. Interesting, but they're jumping around though. Just to the input filter, extend the range a little bit. Get another digit, yeah. not like it matters anyway, but yeah, so it's working, it's doing its job. 1000 volts in, 1 volt out, excellent. Don't touch it. <laughs> Maybe I'm down to like 100 volts or so, yeah, but it, it should be grounded anyway. It's, you know, that's what the guard term was for to ground the casing to make it safe, but it's working, so that's good. Yes, so thank you very much, PCU Way, for the sponsorship of the PCBs and also for Pomona for sponsorship with the Banana Jacks and the screwdriver set which I also showed you so excellent stuff I'm happy with this project that's I'm amazed I'll get into this case I wasn't sure I could squeeze it in so it's in that case that's great that's done I'm very happy with that that's that one done there is a potential here for me to do a change to this project there might be another a third revision of this board if I do a third revision of this board, it would be using those high precision caddock resistors. And I might just do one of those as a adjustable version, which 
but will probably require a bigger case because of it just to take up quite a bit more room obviously it stands off the board and I, I'm using that space inside the case for the BMS stuff like that so I think I'd have to change the case anyway so I think I'll probably leave this one in this case and build a new one I've got some more cases coming I bought, purchased some more cases which are slightly larger so what I'll do is I think I'll get some boards made do another version of a slightly bigger case with a decade resistor church selection so you can choose the division ratios so instead of being just a 1000 to 1 it could be a 10 to 1 give you more options there so yeah watch out for that video give us a thumbs up if you like the video subscribe if you're not subscribed click the bell icon all that stuff and I'll see you next one bye So some guys will remember. Can I say? Some guys have. Something I'm going to have to. Oh fuck! So something I'm going to have to remember to do is to actually ground the guard pencil.